Okay, so here's the plan. I want to wrap up CS and therefore I will cover everything besides Dell and I explained why that is separate in one big video. Since it will be longer, I will also keep it a little bit more casual, but also include the time codes. So don't worry about that. But the reason therefore is just that everything that should have been covered was already covered by everyone else. And then I also have to say that CS, just in terms of products, actually wasn't all that spectacular because we've seen a lot of stuff already beforehand on IFA or there are just so many products that you can't judge at all anyways on the show for like for example all those 8k tvs they look amazing but what else could i tell you that it is an 8k tv it's that big and so on we don't know prices we don't know how good it really performs so that's why i'm not gonna go that much into those so i have a few things that i made photos of i didn't really make much footage that's a little bit something that i regret but i'm gonna cover a few things that got stuck in my head that i want to talk about and the rest will just happen <laughs> okay let's get to Lenovo which was the next one that I've saw and I've seen after Dell and here I have to say it felt a little bit half-assed because there wasn't much new we've seen most of the stuff already on on IFA and the few new things that they had we've actually not getting seen that much hype from which is a little bit odd because obviously they have great products like the x1 carbon and they have their legion series but like i said and especially if you know my opinion about handsome videos you can't really judge that based on the show floor anyway so that's why i'm gonna quickly go through all of that like for example the s940 definitely one thing that i want to review because that one was super thin very slick felt high quality pretty nice so definitely that's one of the interesting ones but other than that they had some monitors and so on i want to get now to bridge because especially if you have an ipad pro and you want a better keyboard than the original one this might be it even though i also have to say that especially this prototype which was the only one available on cs didn't really look that promising because the idea itself i love a lot but the execution felt a little bit on the cheaper side because those hinges were kind of bent yeah, would actually fit the, the iPad, but I mean, it's cool. You can fold it up all the way back. It, the, the keyboard has backlight. It has all the important buttons. Like you can see the layout changed a little bit. They told me that this, for example, is more centered right now to give it a little bit more stability. The keyboard felt good. It's like a more of a desktop device uh, or I mean laptop device. Here you can see, for example, the one for their, for the Chrome devices and so on than the one for the Google Slate. And for example, also for the Surface, here even with a rugged version. But I just have to once again say, these were sometimes um, prototypes, sometimes not. They felt a little bit cheap. But I want to actually also quickly show you a video of the, the bridge. I mean, it is a cool idea and therefore I still hope that they will send me a review on it because I want to see how well the finished product will look like. Because if the hinge works out better, if you can actually put it in properly and you don't have to kind of readjust it too much and it works out nice, it's definitely worth it. Because just the keyboard on its own is definitely better what we have seen on, on, on Apple's own side and it definitely will be a little bit heavier, but it will maybe look a little bit more seamless because that the idea I still liked a lot. But let's move on and talk about one more. I've seen their Penta dr driver or and yeah, but that wasn't usable because it was just a prototype so I couldn't hear it, but it was actually pretty comfortable. So I definitely like that. But what actually stood out for me also a lot was the, the truly wireless system because that one was the cheaper one for 100 and it looks a little bit big, like it's standing out quite a lot, but therefore it should also deliver six hours of battery life about that. Sounded pretty nice, so that might be a cool thing. I definitely hope I will get one of these. And then there was also a little bit of a higher end version for 150 euros that had noise cancelling. And I've seen that from their dual driver, and it was actually pretty good for an in ear. Battery life should be 8 to 10 hours, which is almost unbelievable. And you can charge it up to, I think, two or three times or two and a half times. We will see. But before I'm gonna quickly go over the next one, I've also tried their dual driver a little bit, which was the one with noise cancelling. Personally, I found that one a little bit too thin from the sound. The high is a little bit too brilliant almost. So that one felt a little bit out of balance. For example, the triple driver, the in-ear, that one I have to say was a little bit too bass heavy for me and felt like it was missing a little bit in sparkle. But that's a really quick assumption. I can't really base more judge on that. Let's get to Sennheiser. I only checked pretty much the one that was interesting for me at first was their Truly Wireless as well. But also... 
$300 is too much for this. I mean, it sounded better than any other truly wireless set I had so far, but also just a battery life of three hours. It was also quite big, not super comfortable. I mean, 300 I think is just too much for this. Then I've also seen the Honor View 20. I will talk maybe a little bit about that later. So let's just skip that for now. Conquer, <laughs> I just made this as a joke for Instagram. Let's switch to the next Sony. Yeah, they had, for example, the AG9 or A9G, which was pretty much just an AF9 or A9F with a change design, just like we had on the A1 compared to the AF8. So a little bit disappointing here. Obviously, they had 8K TVs. I mean, what can I tell you? It's an 8K TV. Same as, for example, on Samsung's side. They had 8K, 8K TVs. They looked amazing. But they, everything looked amazing on the show floor besides some cheap TVs. We also had the wall with micro LED. Not much more else to say. This is not a consumer device yet. We have to see this in a proper device so we can judge if micro LED will be the future. It looks like it's supposed to kind of combine the best of both worlds from OLED and LCD. But until we see this in a normal form factor, I'm just not going to talk much more about it. For example, also, that was pretty much just a nice picture. LG's flexible OLED wall looked cool. What was also looking cool, but I kind of don't quite trust it, is for example their A9 Gen 2 intelligent processor. And especially if you look at it side by side with the conventional, this looks a little bit fake to me because I don't think that this new processor can get so much more detail out of it and the conventional looked way too dark. So I'm a little bit hesitant until I actually see some of those in real action where I am. So I'm going to hold on to my judgment for now. About the LG Gram, unfortunately... Not available in Europe. I don't know why, because I would really like to review one. Especially if you look at this one, for example. 17 inches, 8th gen Intel Core, um, Whiskey Lake, then 16 gigabytes of RAM, terabyte SSD, 72 watt hour battery, 1.34 kilograms. And even though I have to say, due to the lightweightness and the materials that they use, it actually feels a little bit on the cheaper side. So definitely not quite as high quality and premium, like for example, what Huawei or Dell has to offer. But just being so light definitely is a big thing. <laughs> I mean, I can't really say much more than that. Uh, as also, they had, for example, the 14-inch version, 1.145 kilograms with also 70, um, 72 watt-hours, which means the battery life on this one should be amazing. And that lightweight of a 14-inch 14 uh, looks definitely promising. But, yeah, not really all that interesting for me since I'm not ever going to review one. Let's move on to Hisense. They had the U30. Yeah. Not that spectacular of a chip, as you can see, the SM6150, I think that's the Snapdragon 450, they told me. Then, yeah, punch hole. What I liked was the fake metal, uh, fake leather back. I would really like to see some more phones, because it just feels very, way more grippy, and it doesn't feel cheap. And the design overall is pretty nice, but it was an entry-level phone. They also had the A6, as you can see, dual screen with an e-ink on the back and a normal one on the front which is odd though because it has a camera on both sides but due to the e-ink display you can make selfies with the e-ink display so nice thing even though a little bit of a side story there were two people kind of covering from hisense the the phones and they had like four different phones and they didn't really get all that much knowledge about these beforehands because especially the woman there was a man and a woman i didn't talk to the man but the woman they had pretty much the spec sheets around with her. And then I asked, what's the refresh rate of the e-ink display? She looked at her spec sheets, didn't find anything. And then she looked at me, 10 megahertz? <laughs> and I thought, okay, 10 hertz or 10 frames per second. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. But I mean, if you only have four products and you have two people, that, that's not bad for four devices. They should know a little bit more about their products. But yeah, other than that, I actually don't have many thing more to show maybe then for example the razor raptor which was a pretty cool device i mean 27 inch quad hd resolution obviously rgb pretty slick design obviously 144 hertz a pretty nice cable management system on the back it is height adjustable and what i like maybe the most even though you won't maybe use it that often you can just flip the screen downwards and then you have easy access to all your ports. I don't know why no one else actually did this before, so I really like that. So this one at around $700 might be a pretty compelling product, but we definitely need to see more. I hope I will be able to review one. And then for example, pretty much the last thing already that I've seen from Skymetric, as you can see, so kind of a LED panel. Pretty smooth animations though, I have to say. It looked pretty nice. But 
other than that, it's pretty much it. So let's quickly talk a little bit about the Honor View 20 again. Um, it really depends on the price because it is still, after all, heavily compromised. Because, I mean, this is the odd thing. You have this great qu quality camera, which should be very good. You have this Kirin 980, which performs great, which on the show floor for some reason didn't, though, because all the devices that I've tried were lagging quite heavily, but it's hard to judge on a show floor. But then we have this display that might be the weakest point because it didn't look anything spectacular. The, the punch hole... Not really quite sure. It did. it actually felt felt more distracting than just a teardrop notch or a notch in general for me. But we'll have to see about that. But generally, it looked great and it felt pretty nice. But bottom firing speaker and so on. So it will be noticeably cheaper than a Mate 20, Mate 20 Pro. But you will get compromised, which is sad to see that you have such a big difference from the chip and the camera down to the display and the speaker which won't be on the same level so it doesn't seem like a fully balanced device but more about that once we actually review it or we is me <laughs> and then Huawei, what i've also seen there is the Huawei Mate book 13 didn't actually make any pictures though even though i have to say it looked pretty nice once i've seen it because when i've heard about it I actually thought yeah lower res screen than an Mate x pro with still though 2160p um no speakers on the bottom anymore and some other sacrifices i thought that's not quite what i want but it's also just 800 euros and once i've seen it in person it looked high quality the display actually looked nice good keyboard pretty compelling it might be i think i would still overall go for the mate x pro just because it's the no compromises thing super super everything about it you know about that so as we have seen the video actually isn't all that long because there wasn't all that much to talk about because i mean 8k tvs thing of the future and not a near one and all the other devices so i think if i ever get a chance again to do this i would definitely get more prepared make more footage and everything because that i la definitely lacked on experience was great but i guess you really didn't see so much great out of that i absolutely get that a little bit sorry for that but yeah it was my first coverage of a huge event like this and I pretty much didn't see much that stood out for me because obviously we had camera companies like Canon, Nikon and also Sony and so on and so forth and they had some new products. But what is there to say? I could read down the specs, others can do this and for example all those things that I've showed, I'm pretty sure everyone else showed this off in a way better way. So I just wanted to tell you what I've seen, what I kind of like. For example, there was also the Jabra 85H for 100 euro, if that's true what I've heard. A noise cancelling headphone that sounded pretty well. The noise cancelling didn't really work on the prototype there just yet, but might also be cool. So CS was cool, the product there, I mean, I'm pretty sure there are some hidden gems, but they were well hidden and I didn't find them. So that's why I'm not completely impressed by the products that I've seen there. There also were a lot of PC stuff that I just don't cover, like for example, Gigabyte, Lenovo with their monitors and so on. But that's just something that you can't really talk much about. And that's why I'm just gonna stop talking also. So yeah, I hope you still liked it. I mean, it wasn't maybe the coverage that you wanted from me, but you couldn't really expect anything else from me either. So I hope you still liked it. And otherwise, until next time.